by the way, can everyone hear me fine at the back? Yeah. Oh, okay, awesome, awesome. Cool. Okay, uh, hi everyone, I'm Serene, and uh, I'm here with a talk on CI, and it's titled Seeing Eye to Eye with CI. <laughs> oh, yes, you laughed. <laughs> Yes, but um, horrible puns aside, um, my, the, the, I recently was involved in a project where I got to set up this end-to-end -end flow of uh, the CI for the project. And, and um, that, yeah, through this, through this setting up, um, I realized that I had some misconceptions about CI in the past that I didn't know I had. And, and also I had some like, learnings. So I just like, gathered everything together and like, uh, would like to share with everyone. So today's talk will be about what CI is, why it's awesome, and um, how to maybe avoid some of the misconceptions and pitfalls. Yes, so, uh, but like I had a, uh, before, before I start with CI, uh, a little shout out to my awesome, uh, the company, uh, the awesome company that I'm in. Um, we at Memories Consulting, uh, we are a software consultancy and we, and we are passionate about the way that we build software and we also do agile consulting. So if you have any questions regarding or, or, or you just wish to chat regarding any of the agile software development practices uh, like TDD, CI, CD, Pi Programming, just come and talk to us and, and hear our take on it. And, and, like, yeah, and, and also if you have any questions regarding the CI talk or, or like any other questions, like just approach any one of us. Like a lot of us like uh, hanging out over there. <laughs> yes. So come talk to us after the talk. So yes. Um, so so let's jump right into it. So have have you ever had the experience of like um, that you've developed a new feature, then then you go like, oh, uh, does it work on like a prod like develop production blah, 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 prod like environment? Um, so then, then you have to like manually test, build, or like if you or if you just like refactor something and you're not sure if like everything still works. Uh, or, or if you're dealing with like huge code, uh, huge merges that cause like merge conflicts and all the other problems that huge, like merging huge chunks of code, especially many multiple people merging is going to cause. So you, so if, if that's the case, then awesome, this is a solved problem because CI can solve this for you. Okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, as every age old uh, what is question, we start with a definition of, C of, of, of the thing that we're trying to solve. Um, so I got this definition from Martin Fowler and I particularly like his definition because it clearly outlines that there is this technical aspect and the, and the cultural aspect to CI. And yes, so CI technically, it is building and testing for you. And it's, it's automating a lot of the a, a lot of things for you. And but then, um, very overlooked is the part where it is a cultural thing as well, which means it involves the team to have some kind of discipline and put in some kind of practices. So we'll talk about uh, a lot about that in the next few slides. Okay. So uh, so this is what a uh, typical CI workflow may work may look like. So a developer would make a small but frequent integration into, in, like by, by small and frequent, we mean like uh, at least once a day. And, and by small, it means that your commit should be like nuclear. So if you are building like a, a, a feature, like if you, if you change a module you, and you fixed the tests for it, then, then probably you have come to a logical conclusion where you can make a commit that doesn't break CI, then you should make that commit. Yes. So, so, so then the so, so yes, the developer will do that, and then you are expecting that it will get to staging or production eventually. So the way it gets there is through the CI pipeline. Yes. So uh, basically, CI is good. These are some just some um, standard uh, phases in, in the CI pipeline. Um, it, first, it compiles. Then, then it runs your test. By the way, uh, you have to have like. Um, the tests were already written. So, so the way we, uh, we do it is we advocate uh, test-driven development, which means you write the test for it first. So you never have to worry about whether the coverage is good enough or not. And, and, and so yes, so it goes through the packaging and all that. And, and so at any stage, if something goes wrong, the developer is immediately notified. And, and the feedback is given at such a point that because the commit was so small, the amount of code that changed, that broke that part of CI is going to be, uh, is going to isolate the problem well enough 
that, that it's not going to be so difficult to try and fix it. And also because it is, um, yes, uh, and also because it's so frequent, um, basically the developers still has context over, like the feedback loop was a lot faster. So he still has context and he can fix it easily. But yes, so if, if everything passes, uh, you basically have a lot of confidence that this piece of code works and anything that reaches staging and production is going to work. Okay, so uh, so we let's look at some technical aspects to CI. What CI is doing actually is that um, quite simply is polling for changes, which is that uh, if 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 you make a if you make a change to your version control system, CI CI like this arrow is always automated, so you never have to manually trigger it, and then and then you can build and test as well. Uh, okay, then, and it's important that you can build and test from the command line because um, CI is basically running commands for you. And if something fails, CI stops the failed commit in its tracks. So you never have to worry about a failed build ever like breaking staging or production. So yes, and then, and then, and then finally it notifies you of the failure. And the way it notifies is there's this thing called a build radiator. And the build radiator is basically something that you can, like just basically just shows you the stages that are on CI currently, whether something's broken, something is running or not. And, and you can just flash this on the, on, on the monitor at home, up there, in the office. <laughs> <laughs> if you work at home, yeah. <laughs> Uh, or, or, um, or uh, you can you probably want to or, or you can do like slack like integrations it just to do, like it's, yes so so yes so, so let's talk about some cultural requirements um yes so if the build radiator is saying oh, hey uh, there's a there's a stage that failed uh there like culturally everyone should take action and the action comes in two steps one no one should be pushing to master anymore like no code should be pushed when CI is broken. And two, you are going to have to fix it as soon as possible because like no one can push anything, right? Uh, okay, so and, and, and if this has been fixed, like uh, earlier I mentioned, the small frequent integrations is, the, is very important because of the benefits that it can bring. And finally, uh, you want to keep the entire CI process running in under 10 minutes because if it runs, if it runs for too long, people are going to like go pick up something else or pick up a new task and, and the chances of, of CI being left uh, fail, failing is a lot higher. Okay, uh, and oh yeah, so uh, I just want to share as well uh, how our team has, to, has, has um, adapted the CI workflow to work for our project and the way the and, and just to give a bit of background on the project, it is it is a React Native project, which means that the output is going to be an, an Android app, an iOS app, uh, and also is served by a Rails API backend. So so yes, uh, we advocate and practice trunk-based development, which means that we work directly off master, so we do not do any feature branches. And and finally, you expect that uh, these are the outputs that I just mentioned. And, and, and the CI that we use is GoCD. Right, let me take a little while to like, talk about GoCD. Um, GoCD is an awesome, uh, robust CI tool that um, I think the biggest, uh, the most interesting thing about GoCD is that it is, there is this concept of pipelines. So if you look at it, uh, pipeline A and B can run uh, in parallel. And the thing is that most importantly, pipeline C is not going to run until pipeline A and B have both stopped. And also you can pipe whatever has been run into pipeline C. Yes, so, 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 so um, before we use that, and, and so you'll, you'll be able to see how we integrate that into our CI workflow in a bit. And, and so, so there, are, there are like um, a lot of plugin support. So one plugin that we use is um, we upload, we use a plugin to upload the, the uh, artifacts to an object storage. So, so if you want to see like a certain um, commit, whatever, whatever was the output of a certain commit, you don't have to rerun CI or whatever. You just have to go to the artifact, artifactory and get it. So, and also uh, it's free and open source. Um, the only thing that you have to pay for is like the hosting charges for for the server, which is costing us like about twenty five dollars a month only. 
Okay. So the, on, the, the only thing that our team felt was maybe a bit lacking was uh, the uh, kind of a clickety GUI that they have. Like if you want to add like a task on, on a certain pipeline, um, it, it, takes, it takes many, many screens and quite a few clicks. Um, but there are ways around it because you can change like configuration files. I, I just code. And, and, there are, and there are things that you can do to use code to change that code. So uh, yes, back to our CI workflow. Uh, so earlier I mentioned uh, we have one pipeline that is running our front end app and another one that is running our back end. And, and af only after those two have finished that we uh, run the end to end test. And oh, uh, sorry. Um, and also, uh, the, the out, like, not pictured here is actually a uh, deployment, two, two more deployment pipelines that fan out into, into the two outputs. And, and, the thing, and those two are going to go to staging. And it goes to staging uh, because we practice continuous delivery. And in continuous delivery, you are, you, you, um, deployments are automated but triggered to production with bio, bio, bio manual trigger. So uh, whereas that contrasts with uh, continuous deployment, which means that um, every commit that you do, as long as CI passes, it goes straight into production. Yes, so, so, so the thing is, um, like a lot of people put CI and CD together and, and, and have you ever wondered why? And I, I think, I think uh, through, through this exercise, I realized that uh, they, they just synergize really well together and CI, CD kind of extends CI in that uh, CI, CI automates um, the building and testing, CD automates the deployment and because CI uh, always makes sure that your, your code is always in a working state and CD allows uh, and has CD gives you the opportunity to like uh, push uh, deploy code out at any time it, together um, they bring business value because then you are able to do fast releases and you're able to get that product out to your end users, which is arguably the most important feedback loop, which is the hardest to get. So, it, so, they, so they shorten that feedback loop, which is awesome. Uh, so yes, uh, so, so basically I've broken down the uh, value of CI into two parts, with the development value as well as the business value. And like earlier I mentioned, um, most, most of the business value is going to be regarding the extremely fast releases you can do with the combination with, with CI. And, and the development value is, is that uh, it uses refactoring, maintains context like I covered earlier. But uh, there, there's this point at the bottom, which is the, uh, provides code as documentation, which is, which is pretty important because like, um, for example, if, if the person who set up the deploy pipeline is, is like on leave and, and that day you need to like change something at an at a, at a environment variable or something like that. And, and, and you realize that, hey, actually all the code is documented uh, there already. Everything you need to run is in CI. So, so everything is provided as documentation. Yes. Um, so, so yes. Uh, let me let me cover some of the uh, um, potential misconceptions and actually misconceptions. Some of them that I had as well in the past. Um, so the first one is, is something that I uh, we see very frequently in in the industry. In that, if you ask someone, hey, "Do you practice CI?" and then they go like, "Oh yes, I use I use this and that too." And hence, I practice CI. But as we have seen, CI is not about the two. CI is about the practice. And, and, there, and, and, and if you leave a build on CI, then, and, and it's broken, and, 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 and then you just say, oh yeah, I practice CI. No, that you don't, you're not actually practicing CI, which leads to the next point. We'll fix it later, is something that you don't want to say. Because if, if a failed build is on CI, then no one can push. Yes, and, and also, uh, uh, that it's too early to set up CI. It's, uh, it's actually never too early to set up CI because CI should grow as, as the project um, gets more complicated. If not, if, not it gets, if not, you get to a point where the hurdle for setting up CI is like so huge that no one wants to set it up anymore. And then that's when you are scaling and, and you really need CI for help. 
Oh, that, oh, that. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought of this. I thought of this at one point very early on. See, yeah, it's a cloud thing. But um, if, you, if you think about it, like GoCD is something that is self-host. So, so actually, we can run it on your local machine as well. So CI is not a cloud thing. CI is, CI is basically just the tool that automates the thing, and, and there is a practice. Uh, or, or that CI is too troublesome to set up. Like if, if you say this, then you're just like um, kind of kicking the problem, kicking the can down the road, and and when where it will get to become a bigger problem in the future. Or or or, or that or that if you, if you realize, huh, I've been working on this feature branch for like a week, and I have like three hundred code changes. <laughs> like uh, then then you're not really practicing continuous integration, right? Okay, uh, so uh, there's some other learnings that I had. Um, uh, that's not directly related to CI, uh, but, but I realized that CI actually, uh, once I took a step back, I realized CI um, fits really, really nicely with the rest of the agile software development practices. Like, um, because if you think about that, if I thought, I thought about it and um, CI, CI, CI is all about automating feedback loops as fast as possible. And, and everything in Agile is actually about making feedback loops very, very fast as well. So, so it fits in nicely. And, and also, um, this point on DevOps, um, there's, there's like a lot of debate over what, is, like what a full stack developer really is. And, but a lot of people can agree that uh, one of those stacks uh, does include DevOps. And 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 as a as a relatively new developer myself, um, that this was resetting re up CI was really my first experience with DevOps, and 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 I do feel like it has made me more aware of the infrastructural changes that my code is going to make, and it feels I, I feel like it does make me grow. Uh, it did make me grow as a developer, and and yeah, so it, so I would highly recommend like trying out DevOps if you haven't, and. Uh, and yeah, I'd like to end it with this comic that really tickled me the first time I saw it. Um, uh, so, so yes, so this is about this feature becoming a bug. Uh, so, but, but then if you think about it in another way, like if, 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 if it's not QA but CI that caught it, then, then actually you should be happy about it because if there is a bug, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but if I say it's the bug, then CI is finding you the bug in the fastest time possible, which is awesome. So yes, uh, so so if, you, if if this has piqued your interest and you want to find out more, you can you can go to these resources. Or you, please come talk to us. Yes, uh, you thank, thank you so much. You have been an awesome audience. <laughs> So yeah, uh, you all know what CI stands for, right?